Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Revealed. Now I know what you're thinking, uh, but Ken, you're not in the shop and this is a show giving us an inside look at the inner workings of the NS Builders cabinet shop. You're right, but not everything we do starts here in the shop. Um, most of what we do actually starts in the field where we take some field measurements. Now you can see behind me, there's an entryway. That entryway is uh, a little bit rotted out and needs to be replaced. So what we're gonna do is measure that. Our lead installer, James, is gonna meet me over here. We're gonna take some measurements so that we can bring this back into our shop and fully build it in our shop, then deliver it here, already fabricated, most likely already primed, and then just install it real quick. Because this is outside, we're going to be using um, a type of mahogany or, or a sister thereof called Sapili. It is great for outdoor uses. The rot resistance is phenomenal and uh, it's going to last a really long time out here. So let me get going on measuring that and I'll bring you guys along. So now that we went ahead and took all of our measurements, let me go ahead and show you guys what we're actually working with here and why we are replacing this. So we're gonna remove all of this molding here, remove the arch, we're gonna change the light location. Actually gonna put two lights, one on either side of the door and get rid of all this, making this all brand new. So you can see here, all of this is rotted out over the years. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and replace this with a Sapili. As I mentioned, it is very weather resistant, rot resistant, so this will last for years and years. So climbing up a little bit further, you can just see that over the years, this has really rotted out. There was a very detailed curved molding here. Very difficult to see where it went now with the garland up. Now we are gonna change the design a little bit as well. Instead of having you know a lot of this molding, this is actually just gonna be one larger flat panel. And then coming down through here, We'll keep the core bolts. We'll actually, we'll replace these ones, but, um, you know, replace them with new ones, but we will keep the core bolts. And then coming down through here and here, it will actually just be one more so flat panel with, um, I guess more of a shaker style panel in here. Now that we're back here in the shop, we can go ahead and break down our pieces for picking out what we need for lumber, um, as well as calculating the radius of that arch and making a template so that we can create that curve. Let me show you what we're working with here. So we have all of our dimensions laid out. Because there's a lot of moldings going in here, um, there is a local supplier to us that does have all these moldings um, already you know, stocked and ready for us, as well as dimensional lumber. And because we have all of the sizes now, and most of this is around the same size as uh, a standard already dimensioned lumber. We're just gonna go ahead and pick everything up um, from them, all the material. Typically we're getting all of our material in rough form like this here, but in this case, we'll go ahead and get it already surfaced, which is called S4S, surfaced for sides. So with that, we're just gonna pick up, you know, going through here, we can see after we have calculated that I need about six one by fours. Those are gonna be the side pieces here, um, as well as the return backs and the cross parts um, called rails. We're gonna get some one by sixes as well. That'll cover up some of this top portion up here. And then a one by eight as well for this middle portion and these base pieces here. Now for this arch, I showed you guys over there in the field. This is that piece that we took down. It is in really rough shape. You can see, I mean, it's cracked and split and just rotted out all over the place. So I went ahead and actually drew up these profiles so that we could have some custom knives made for our molder so that we can go ahead and recreate this arch um, from a new piece. They did it in a two piece molding. We're gonna go ahead and do it in a one piece molding, but it will be several um, passes and several glue ups just due to the size. This is about uh, four and an eighth inches overall. So that is quite a large pass for the molder. 
So it's a multi-step process. So to give you a little bit more about what we're gonna do here for this curved um, molding, we're gonna make two templates. We'll have our inner circle and our outer, our, our inner radius and our outer radius. And what we're gonna do here is make one template that runs on the inside and one for the exterior. Then we're gonna come over, we'll pull out our molder and we'll actually fasten those templates down, you know, the inside one here, the outside one here going all the way across and through so that it will give us a guide similar to these two here. They would just be curved so that as our piece is going through, it will kind of turn with that radius and we'll get a nice clean cut with our molder knives. Now I know this machine might look small, but it is quite powerful and will, will give us that uh, shape that we're looking for and it will be nice and clean. So now that we have our dimensional lumber broken down as well as our moldings and we've calculated that radius, I wanna dig into this a little bit more. So the formula to find the radius, it does look a little bit intimidating, but as we're breaking it down, it becomes pretty easy and uh, manageable. We end up with uh, 57 and three quarters for our radius. Now I'm gonna show you how we got that. And before we actually start cutting our pieces, we'll make templates to test and make sure that that's correct. So you're gonna to wanna to take a straight edge and a tape measure, or you know, in this case, we're dealing with pretty small measurements. So just uh, an engineer's ruler. We're gonna basically want to hold our straight edge at two points here. And in a case like this, we're gonna to wanna to try to avoid any of the paint or the cracks. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is keep your two points of your straight edge touching um, a clean point and then measure the middle here with your ruler. So basically you're getting the height from here to here, which in this case is 5 sixteenths of an inch. And then we also want to measure the back just to double check that our pieces are correct. Due to this extra lip here, I can't just hold the ruler on and hold the two points this way and measure that. I could, but that would only give me the measurement here that's uh, about an inch back. So I just went ahead and touched the edge of the ruler to both sides of my curve, drew a line, and then measured back from my line to the edge, also giving me about 5 sixteenths. So from there, I can just bring it over here, run my formula, and come up with my radius. So that about does it for this week's episode. I know the format was a little bit different than the last two where we kind of broke this one up into segments where we're in the field and then bouncing back over here to the shop. Shoot us uh, a line in the comments below and let us know what you think about that format over uh, just the, the one shot, kind of walking through the shop. And uh, thanks for watching.